if you're using JAWSM, you can see a lot of details. I'm trying to find the buttons to make my screen get bigger. Well, we'll do it this way. Okay, so this is Strava software is run, there are 42 million people that have Strava accounts and they run around and compete against each other and just run for, or walk or whatever. And they're leaving a GPS trace, which is wonderful because they leave enough of them that you can actually see where roads are right through the trees. This is the, a picture of the United States with, a, there's some, you can add labels and things to it just to see it. For, but what we really want to do is have this as our background in JASM. And there's a way to do it, and it's evolved. Over the, in the beginning, Strava just let you do it. Then Strava had problems with that. So they made it hard to do it. You had to go to your advanced settings and you write copy cookies and things like that. But then it's been improved since then. But not everybody has found the answer. Strava, you can change the colors in Strava. You can look at a lot of detail here. We're looking at uh, in the main, and you can actually see underneath are the op OpenStreetMap names because they use OpenStreetMap maps that was resolved a couple weeks ago where they actually put their logo, our logo, on the bottom. You can see a lot of detail. You, you can um, go the red lines. The red is the, they show a heat map. So the hottest things show up the brightest. And that would be the center line of all the people that ran up and down that road would be where the red is. Here you can see really strong red roads are here, but then you don't see any roads here. These are probably places where people walked along the river and there's probably a sidewalk there, which is neat. This one, you can see the open street map road right in the center and then the spread of the Strava road. So if Strava, you might find out that our road is misaligned with all the, all the um, Strava heat maps. You, people were talking about having to have a paid account to use Strava. You don't have to have that. You just click on the sign up button and you pick away, it's free. And I sign in with Google because it's easy. I don't need to remember the passwords or anything. I just sign in and I'm in. That's what you need to do in order to be able to use it. Once you have to sign in. And then you go to a, a GitHub site where this guy has created a Strava heat map to OSM background extension that works in Chrome and other browsers. That means it's gonna do all the copying of the cookies and everything from Strava into the imagery so you don't have to go in every day and set something. The way you do it is you click on this JavaScript called background.js. That's about it. That starts the Java thing running on your PC and creates an extension, in my case, in the Chrome browser. Here's a listing of my Chrome extensions. I only have a couple, but the Strava extension looks like a white S in a gray background. And this is the thing that's going to copy the information from Strava that makes JASM work. It appears on your toolbar, you know, below the address bar and as this S. And the only going to have to, about every couple of weeks when Strava changes their cookies so people don't steal stuff from them, you have to click on that. To, to fix things up. Here I'm showing my browser and I don't have Strava open. And if I clicked on that thing, it tells me it can't read or change the site's data. When I have Strava loaded in one of my windows, now if I click on it, it says this can read and change the site data. So you click on that and that is like a copy command. So it copies ton of stuff. Then you go to your imagery preferences in JASM. 
you can load lots of different imagery that isn't standard. And this image is called TMS image imagery. So I'm going to show you the steps you go through. You click on this TMS logo, and you, a window opens up for you to add the imagery. In this window, you're going to paste, just do a paste. You've already done the click the S in Strava, and now you've got something in your buffer, you paste it, and it's going to look like, like this. This is the stuff in the old days, you had to copy things and paste them in, and make sure you didn't make any mistakes. So it says heat map, external, Strava. The next step is you have to fill out these other windows. You touch the tab button, and this, the top window, copies into the bottom, and now it says TMS colon HTTP, HTTPS and all the Strava information. Now you've got to do a couple more steps. Here it says enter the maximum zoom level. For Strava, the zoom level is 15. So once you put the 15 in, now this window says TMS bracket 15 and bracket, close bracket. And that's what you need to make everything work. And then you just type a title in down here for your imagery so you can find it in your imagery men menu. And I just usually put Strava and the date that I did it because every week or so, you're gonna to have to re refresh it. Once you've done that, it appears in your list of imagery. These are all the different kinds of things, imagery that I've added myself, like the Massachusetts or the, or, and so my Strava one appears there. As you're, I could have in this imagery, if I didn't like the color Strava had, I could have gone in here where it says blue red. I happened to change it to blue because the red was too strong and I couldn't see it. But that's, you can make a tiny edit there to change the color you wanna see. Okay, so now it's in my imagery. And then if I go back, I'm done with my preference setting. I go back to my main menu, I look in my imagery and I go down and now I have Strava with that imagery. The way you use it. On Slack the other day, I was talking to Philip Malloy in uh, Maine, was uh, complaining that he had uh, mapped a trails on a Richmond Island, and which was pretty cool. And now I want to, I love to finish this with Jewel Island if I could find some trail data. So I contacted him and showed him how this would work. Here's Jewel Island, and here is the Strava imagery overload overlaid. So people have been walking or running or whatever down these blue paths. The blue imagery represents all the tracks that they created. And it's pretty easy at that point. Well, here you can see the same tracks. This is just with the topo imagery behind. But there's an old road on the island. You can see the tracks pretty close to the road. So you can go in there and draw a line along that blue line and fit it and then give it a trail name. And you probably can find from the Jewel Island people a map with names. So you're pretty sure where you put that is where people, where the trail really exists. Here's a, an example of what I sometimes do. I go to all trails. If I'm looking for a place to walk or hike, I'll go to all trails. And I, so here I went to Phillip, Mount Phillip, and I saw the way all trails does this, they also use the open street map map. They create, they just take a person's GPS track when he hiked it, it's just one guy like that. Now the dotted line behind it is open street map. And you can see it's not quite the way his trail was. So if you go to Strava, I took his, I took the, those dotted lines that represented the open street map trail and I fitted them to the Strava trace so now it's pretty darn close to wherever people are going to walk. It's perfect, I think. And the next, and I added one more step since I like hiking trails and I like this tool called Waymark Trails. It's a way to write a relation. And you just add in Mount Phillip Trail, a network, a local walking network. You say route is a hiking route, the type is a route and you add that to a relation for that trail you put into OpenStreetMap, 
and it shows up in uh, waymarked hiking trails, which is a beautiful thing that can show you the elevations and everything about the, um, the trail. Here's a, a place in Maine where you can see the, the Strava traces. And I put this trail in because I went to their, the local hiking site Chamber of Commerce, and they had this as a, a trail with a name. So I just added the trail in and then put the name on it. I didn't add this trail in. When you see something curvy like this, it's probably a mountain bike trail. And there are just trails all over the place that aren't in OpenStreetMap. They're all a place you could go off and walk them if you had, had them on OpenStreetMap. And I like to do that. I find a trail that I can see in Strava and I go over there and walk along it and see if it's really the right thing but it's a tremendous way. See these highways, you can see the, the blue, blue from Strava. It's just a great way to verify that places are where you expect them to be. And that's, um, that's all I'll talk about today. I've got another slide, I could do other things, but my time's up, so I'll turn it over to Wade. Okay, so I'm gonna do a actual live demos of things because I'm a suffering fool and I like live demos. So what I'm going to do is show you a couple of different things that I do in JASM. Um, I'll start off with downloading some data. And in this case, a JASM, like everybody has said, has way too many buttons. And what I've done is I've added a button. This button here is a download with four dots around it, which means download my window. So where you see, what you see is what you get. Normally you go to this one and you have to kind of pick out where you wanna be. And I usually do this and then I mean to do something in the middle and I get completely confused when I get the wrong place entirely because if I pan, I'm still gonna download this little pink square I'm way the heck over here. Anyway, so this area is a park that I discovered recently in Maryland. And uh, joys of live demos. I'm trying to do a live demo. Oh, I'm doing it wrong. Let's try that. Okay, one more time. Somehow I destroyed everything. Okay. Well, basically this is showing that I've imported a GPS layer um, of a new set of roads in a brand new park. And what I think I'm doing wrong is, there we go. Okay. So in this case, I did some driving and some walking through this new park. And you can see that Clearly the park boundaries are a little off and I can add all these roads in with a nice GPX uh, file that I pulled off of my GPS device. Not everybody has those, but a lot of phones do that. And Alan was going through a lot of Strava and probably we have Strava under this uh, park as well. Okay, uh, another thing I do a whole lot of is GoPro. And GoPro, most of them since version five black have a built-in GPS. So that means that you can geotag photos and geotagged photos are a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, assuming that I zoom to them again, live demo. Here we go. Here's some geotagged photos. So, I tend to use my bicycle for geotagged photos, but in some cases I will use a car window. This is a car window. And you can see these are pretty nice clear photos with just a little bit of glare off the glass. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is show you. Just so you know, we can't see the photo, or I can't see uh, the photo. Ah, no, 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 no. Thank you. Hold on, let me see if there's a sharing thing I'm doing wrong. 
usually if you share the whole screen instead of just yes. one app you can yes, see everything that's what i thought i was doing wrong so yeah i've i've done this before too no worries stop it Don't worry, I edit all of the videos before I post them on YouTube, so take your time. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, am I sharing everything now? Yes. Good. Perfect. I can see a parking lot. Exactly. So since I've taken uh, what I do with my GoPro, and uh, hopefully there aren't people as crazy as me, but more, than, more power to you if you are, I have uh, one GoPro, in this case, shooting out the right side uh, passenger window. And GoPro, uh, the older series was 12 megapixels. The brand new one is now up to 20 megapixels. So that is quite a lot of detail. And what you can do with all that is step along and then you can zoom into the photo. And it's probably not real clear, but this is 10730. So you can pick out house numbers, you can clearly pick out license plates, which of course, uh, I also contribute to Mapillary. Mapillary and OpenStreetCam are both uh, OSM available street level imagery contributed by volunteers. I'm also a volunteer for all that. So with all of these photos, whether you use them directly, which I tend to use directly because uh, Mapillary has a problem with, not only do they blur license plates, which I understand and appreciate, they also tend to blur uh, mailboxes because they start looking like license plates. And I really like to pull addresses. So what I'm doing with this address is I will use a plugin and in this case someone has kindly drawn in this um, a, a block of row homes also known as townhomes and in british english they are called terraces so there are lots of plugins i've downloaded a plugin called the terracer and you do that with shift t once you have installed it you enter the lowest number for the sake of time I've actually put tagged at the lowest number and the highest number so that I don't have to watch, you don't have to watch me fish through the imageries and pull all of them off. And then I know this is Bridal Rain Terrace and I say, okay. And like that, I drop, uh, I split up this block into each individual townhome and get the numbers. Now, one thing it doesn't do particularly well is it doesn't know which way you're going. So if it gives you, if it reverses them, there's actually a way to reverse the, the terrace after it's laid it down. Uh, the other thing that is useful to know is that it's probably best to first thing, put all of the information that you want on this. So in this case, I'll take one house number and I will populate uh, the city, the zip code, what kind of a building it is, which in this case, it's a terrace, um, how many levels, it's two levels, etc. And then I will do the shift T to drop all the numbers on. Kind of like that. Um, so another tool I like is uh, the building tool. And let's see. Uh, three. Oh dear, that's a little too far out. Um, oh, sorry, wrong place again. Anyway, let's just pretend I have some buildings. So what the building tool will allow you to do is say that you have a building here and let me make a little tiny layer of nothing.
Okay, so I'm just uh, demonstrating. So the building tool is this little uh, funky looking building here. You start it with the B, you draw one edge of your building, and then you drag across to get the other edge and you click and you get a building in exactly three clicks like that. Um, if you use X, you can then drag the building and make it into an L or, you know, funkier shapes. I tend to keep my buildings pretty simple, but occasionally I get really carried away with things and make it pretty. Uh, ignore the hatching. That's just because this is a demo and I'm not actually using real data in the background. And that is really all I had for my quick uh, walkthrough. I've got another one I can ah, show. Perfect. I will stop sharing. Okay. I'm going to show you one that I discovered just the other day. I've been... Uh, Okay, in the data menu, there's a thing called Open Custom URL, and it's pretty neat. I'm going to show you how I take a, a lat long location in OpenStreetMap and then go look and see what it looks like in uh, Google Maps. And I usually would do this by doing Control Shift Alt to copy the lat long, and I go to Google and paste it. I'll show you how I used to do it. I'd have a node like this and I'd say, what the heck is there? I can't see that very well. I'd like to see it better. So I'd click on copy coordinates. The next step would be paste the coordinate that I just copied into Google and hit search. Google would say it's right here. And then I'd click on the image so that it would zoom in, show me what it looks like in Google. So that was several steps to get what I want. With this thing that's in the uh, one of the plugins called custom URL. All you have to do is click shift H to make that happen. But you have to have Google Maps, the string set as the thing you want. You could also pick National Land Survey or these other things. How about uh, any of these that are in that menu or you can add things to that menu that you'd like to see. So when you go to that menu, utilities plugin, under preferences, you go to utils to settings and you go to custom URL configuration. You just pick the one you want. Like I like on Google, so I double click it. I go up here and say, save to file. Now, uh, all I have to do is in, in JOSM, is take that node, click Shift H, and it does all those things I did and just brings me right to the image, right to what I want to see. So that, I just discovered that I, this uh, two weeks ago, and I've been using JOSM for years and going through this repetitive process to copy the node lat latitude, longitude, paste it into Google, hit Google, and hit the other thing. And this just does it all in one, one step. You can, just double click on any of these in the when you're back in the menu. Get back to the menu. Now, so once you've set it, it stays set, but you can go back to this screen and change it to the Keep Right Validator. And then every time you click that, it's going to take you to the Keep Right Validator and you can see everything's wrong in the area where you are. It's just a nice, handy. A quick way to do things, and I'm keep discovering quick ways to do things. Um, I think there are many more things to be fun to talk about in one of these meetings about how to do things like this.